What's up, Westland fans? This is Kenny Cummins here of Chilling with Kenny C right here on TMVCafe.com. Hope everybody's off to a good start in the new year thus far. Man, it's eight days into the new year already, literally. Um, uh, My guest, professional wrestler out there in the West Virginia area, his vibes is different, and he performs his unique his style is, is, is creativity. Uh, matter of fact, it's your boy, Gen Z. He's with All me right now. All day long, baby. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm doing all right, man. Thanks for joining me uh, for this interview. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, man. So um, how are you? how are you feeling about your... I mean, obviously, like I said, eight days into 2024. How are you feeling about your new year thus far? You know, I'm I'm really excited. It's already off to a really good start. A lot of cool things coming up for 2024, and it's it's going to be a pretty awesome year. Yeah, man. So I see you've been – you work with numerous promotions, uh, BGW, uh, ACW. I think I've actually met you. At Bluegrass Wrestling Con at Cattlesburg, Kentucky, one of yes, the sir. Bluegrass Cons, uh, a little over a year ago. So you've worked for numerous promotions. You've been wrestling, uh, for over three years. Uh, what what do you want to accomplish in twenty twenty four that you didn't get to do the previous year? Or so, um. 2024, I just want to do more, if that makes sense. Uh, 2023 had a lot of cool stuff that happened, but 2024, I want to make it a year to remember. I want to make it a year that really put me on the next level, put me above everybody else to make me really stand out and show people why I'm here and what I'm here to do. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely feels like with wrestling these days, it'd be very challenging to stand out for everybody because it feels like everybody's taking something for someone else and trying to make it their own. Um, it could be challenging. Like, how, how are you able to adapt to that, you know, try to come up with something different, unique, that makes you different for everyone else? You know, I just, I, I take a look at everybody else and I, I see what they're doing and I try to do the complete opposite. Um, you know, if you, if you go to some indie shows, you see a lot of guys wearing black, a lot of guys, their, their gear is black or sometimes it's black and red stuff like that. So I really wanted to set myself apart from them. And I wanted to be more bright, more, um, characteristic type, uh, comic book character, really, really out there. So I got these bright blue pants that I wear in this black and pink jacket that I come out in, you know, everything's real bright. And I try to make sure that I stand out and I'm not blended in with the rest of those black and red characters. Um, yeah. I just try to stand out as much as I can, whether it's with uh, my gear, whether it's my move set, whether it's just the charisma, uh, no matter what, I'm just trying to stand out. So let me talk to you about your stage name, Gen Z. Um, you know, you got, you know, with Gen Z, you got a variety of people. What what made you decide to go with the name Gen Z? Uh, so I was born, believe it or not, I was born in 2006. I'm 17 years old, started training at 13. So I am part of Generation Z. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of my friends, they just called me Z. So I took those two things and I threw them together, Gen Z. So like to the point, um, represent for the Gen Z crowd, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, so absolutely, man. So, uh, what you got coming up, uh, in January or maybe February? What would you, as far as upcoming shows, what, where, where can people check you out? Uh, this weekend, uh, Sunday, January 14th in Bluefield, West Virginia, uh, Premier Wrestling League, uh, they're bringing in Leo Rush. Uh, so that'll be a real fun show. Uh, then the weekend after in Nitro, West Virginia, I have uh, Maximum Velocity Wrestling, where I will be in a fatal four-way 
for the number one contendership of their United States Championship. And then I had Battleground Wrestling on February 17th, uh, but they have rescheduled to a date they haven't announced yet. Uh, but that will be coming soon, and I'm real excited for that one. So you definitely got some shows lined up uh, for 2024. Uh, go check out the shows that he mentioned. Uh, support independent wrestling. Spread the word. Um, and, you know, check out Gen Z. Watch him work. Um, so, yeah, uh, I did get this. I'm definitely going to have to see you wrestle in person. One Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, whether it's Bluegrass Wrestling Con or whether it's – Maybe in the Kentucky area, maybe West Virginia area. Um, so with you, man, like uh, I'm, I'm looking at <clears throat> some of your videos, looking at some of your promos. Um, you know, you, you got some style to you, man. You got some style to you. Uh, who do you consider like some of your influences? Those that you know that 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 you look up to. Oh man, I have a lot. Um, I'm real big into character work. Like I love the big characters. Uh, one of my favorites that I can think of right off the top of my head is Dolph Ziggler. He was a big character guy. Um, the standing out Ziggler, uh, Hardys, um, just people like that who really stand out, who, like I said, big into character, just anybody who has a character, I am probably a huge fan of them. I love stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I really like to um, influence myself off of people like Ziggler, like the Hardys, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I like Ziggler. Um, I'm looking forward to see what he what he's going to do with New Japan. Uh, he made an appearance at Wrestle Kingdom last week. It looks like he's going to be teaming up with his brother, which it looks like that's something that he's been wanting to do ever since he moved off from WWE. So it looks like he get a chance to so sibling bonding. Yeah, that, that'll brother. be real cool. So um, That'll be real cool. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, I, I feel like Ziggler, you know, he, he, he's, he, I mean, if you look at the last year or two he had, before we stop seeing him, like he still can go, he still can perform. He's still got the microphone. Um, he's he's a good worker. He make anybody good. Regardless, Absolutely. Regardless of the length of the match or the, the segment, he makes the most out of everything. Um, yeah, I'm re I'm really excited to see what he does because I personally feel like. WWE takes these guys and really waters them down where we don't get to see their full potential, what they can do. So I'm really excited to see what he is going to do, uh, what Riddle is going to do, Mustafa Ali. I'm real excited about those three. Um, but like Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, they're not the same in WWE as they were like in Ring of Honor and stuff. They're still great now, but if you go back and watch their stuff, then it's like, holy crap. Like it's not even the same person. Adam Cole, for example, they're all – watered down if that makes sense and i just really love watching their stuff outside of wwe because it's like a whole new persona yeah it feels like when you go from one promotion to another it makes it feel like you have to adapt um with wwe they do they do things like differently from, compared to other promotions uh with adam cole in particular um he just got to stay healthy. Uh, yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's been catching bad breaks these past few years, especially since he's been with AEW. It's like we really haven't gotten to see what he can do, per se. Right. Uh, we, we, we see some sprinkles of what he's capable of. It's just the injury bugs. It's just he's getting at him. Um. So hopefully once he's healthy, um, once that foot is fully healed, he can do something with uh, Undisputed Kingdom. And I'm curious to see how that works out. I'm hoping we get some Wing of Honor pull out of this. You know. Yeah, but, I'm really, I'm really excited about that too. That's gonna be cool. Yeah. So, and obviously, I feel like the reason he moved on from WWE is because he just want to be with his friends. You know. Yeah. You see, he sees Young Bucks. 
BC, you know, Bullet Club guys out there having fun. And it felt like him and WWE wasn't going anywhere. So he moved on, ended on good turns. And uh, he just want to hang out with his friends, work with his friends and just produce. Yeah, because they they weren't moving him on to that main roster anytime yeah. soon. At least I didn't think so. And yeah. he did everything there was to do in NXT. So I think he was just ready to move on. And I've loved seeing Cole in AEW. And I think he's done a phenomenal job, uh, yeah. at least while he's been healthy. Um, but uh, I'm excited he's back and he's doing the devil thing with the uh, Undisputed Kingdom. I'm real excited to see how that goes. And I hope it's a good start for um, Ring of Honor, too, because Ring of Honor has been kind of on the down low lately. Uh, since Tony Khan bought him out and I really yeah. hope that they can get like a channel on TV or something weekly and really get that product out there. Cause I think that would be a really good thing yeah. for professional wrestling and indie guys like myself, since they don't have AEW dark anymore and they've been having a lot of indie guys on ring of honor and stuff. And that would give them good time, like good TV time and stuff. And I think that'd be a really good thing for everybody. I definitely would like to see ring of honor on weekly television. And it looked like they were getting close to it with for CW. And then for some apparent reason, Tony Khan turned it down. Yeah. I'm like, man, like the previous regime, you know, it, it doesn't get talked about enough how they handle everything with the pandemic and and the protocols and everything. And they did it, and everybody still got paid through that whole pandemic period. Yep. Um, so, you know, the previous regime did everything that they could. Um, so um, I'm really hoping Wing of Honor can eventually be on weekly television. I mean, yeah, they got the Honor Club thing. I get that. Now, obviously, you want to utilize that. Uh, but Wing of Honor deserves to be on television. You know, I agree. It, it, and that's that. And they will give some exposure to indie guys like yourself and, and many others um, that's looking for an opportunity, per se. So um, I guess we'll see how that goes. Uh, where can people find you in social media? Uh, social media. So we got Instagram, Twitter, and uh, TikTok, all at real underscore gin underscore Z, all lowercase. Uh, Facebook, just Gen Z and YouTube uh, at It's Your Boy Gen Z. Uh, trying to climb the YouTube channel right now. We're currently sitting at like 315 subscribers right now. Um, so that's slowly growing. TikTok's at about, I think, almost 4K now. Mm. And everything else is growing pretty well right now. Facebook's been doing pretty well. Uh, but yeah, go hop on those social medias. Give me a follow. Also, there's links on there for merchandise, pro wrestling tees, and brain buster tees. Uh, a bunch of awesome stuff up there. If you like SpongeBob, there's SpongeBob up there. Ninja <laughs> Turtles. There's there's Fortnite. There's even Taylor Swift. I mean, whatever you want, <laughs> it's out there. It's out there. I'm kind of glad you brought that up because you have acknowledged yourself as a Swifty. Oh, absolutely. Um, but like proudly. Uh, what, what what what's the reaction you get when you when you tell folks, oh, I'm a I'm a Swifty? Oh, you know, people do their normal thing. They're like, oh, Taylor Swift, bleh. and then some people are like, oh, I love Taylor Swift. So it's just like, it's it's a mixed reaction from both, but it's either one or the other. I don't hate Taylor Swift. I mean, she's one of the biggest music stars in the world, and yeah. she's currently dating one of the best football players in the league right now. Now people say the Chiefs been shaky since they've acknowledged themselves as a couple per se. Um look, Taylor Swift, she's not hurting nobody. Like she Yeah, no. Yeah, if, if she, anything, it's a coincidence. There's yeah. Taylor Swift has nothing to do with how bad they've been playing recently. Yeah. I mean they lost <laughs> to the Raiders. Come on. I mean, let's be honest here. <laughs> yeah, and you know you know, it's, it's not Taylor's fault that those receivers be dropping the footballs. Like they got more, exactly they got more drop passes the receivers than any other team, and it kind of makes you wonder. Like maybe I should have gotten DeAndre Hopkins. Like he could have been very helpful, and yeah. now he's stuck with Tennessee for at least one more year. 
And who knows what's going to happen with Derrick Henry uh, with his contract. Uh, I hope he competes for a championship contender. He's done everything he can do for yeah. the Titans. Like, he's got nothing else to prove there. They're not going anywhere. Tanny Hill's probably going anyway. So, go play for a title, title contender next season. Um, and, you know, he might have to settle for the minimal, per se. But, you know, he's he just turned 30 years old. So, he's not all old. But, right. So um I, I think he can he could be contri- he could be a factor to a title contender team. Um, yeah. So but the it's your boy Gen Z. Uh speaking of the merch, he's walking the merch. Uh he's got the hoodie there. Uh you can get it on Pro Wrestling Tees and Brain Busters. He even got the hat on. You know, it's just spreading the, spreading the awareness uh per se. Uh, but thank you so much, Gen Z, for being on the show. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, check him out, Gen Z, on all the social media sites. Uh, and he he got some shows coming up in the next week or so, and in February as well. He'll post all the info on his social media sites. It was great to have you on, man. Thanks for your time, and uh. I'm wishing you the absolute best in 2024. Thank you for your time. Hey, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. That's going to conclude the interview. Y'all check it out, man. Chill with Kenny C right here on TMVCafe.com. I'm Kenny Commons. That's your boy, Gen Z. Um, we are out of here. You all. I'm going to do the Gen Z pose <laughs> here. Uh, we out of here. Peace. All right.